We proclaim the birth of our Savior, sent to nurture and protect us. Jesus, Emmanuel, the promise that God is with us. In hope, we follow. We celebrate the wonder of Jesus, sent to heal and transform us, the Messiah. In awe, we follow. We worship the light of the world, sent to guide us forward. Jesus, born of God, our eternal grace. In faith, we follow. May God lead us in the new year to follow Jesus' way in worship together. Arise, your light is come, the Spirit's call obey. Show forth the glory of your God, which shines on you today. Arise, your light is come, fling wide the prison door, proclaim the captive's liberty, good tidings to the poor. Arise, your light is come, the mountains burst in song. Rise up like eagles on the wing, God's power will make us strong. Welcome to a new year and welcome to Birchcliff Bluffs United Church as we consider a new year before us, a new year that remains uncertain, that calls us to consider new ways to connect and be church together, I welcome you to all of the possibilities that this year offers. We have many things that are ongoing in our congregation, the Bluffs Food Bank, the tireless work of the volunteers at the food bank. We have ongoing programs at Toby's Place and Dorothy's Place, activities that continue online, and there will be activities that continue and new activities as well. You'll soon be learning more about a midweek contemplative worship that will be led by Reverend Carmen Lanos, our community development minister and stay tuned for those details. And there will be other things as well. But we want you to know today, right now, at Birchcliff Bluffs United Church, whoever you are, however you identify, wherever you come from, you are welcome here in this place as we worship. We take a moment as we enter into worship to acknowledge the sacred land upon which we gather. It has been a site of human activity for many thousands of years. It is the home of the Huron-Wendat, the Patoon First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit and the Scugog. The lands are part of the Williams Treaty. And today, the meeting place in and around Toronto is still home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island and we're grateful for the opportunity to live and work on this territory. And we seek to be mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. You may want to take a moment to light a candle for this worship service. And here I have lit a candle as well. It reminds us that in the midst of shadows, or even if we're dazzled by the glare of lights, we search for the radiant one who gives life, hope, and joy. And as we light the Christ candle today, 
we encounter the light of Emmanuel, God with us. And we warm to this light. All poor ones and humble and all those who stumble come hastening and feel not afraid for Jesus our treasure with love past all measure in lowly poor manger was laid the wise men who found him laid rich gifts around him yet oxen they gave him their hay and jesus in beauty accepted their duty contented in manger service he ne'er can despise, whose love still is able to show us that stable where softly in manger he lies. The Christ child will lead us, the good shepherd feed us, and with us abide till his day. Then hatred he'll banish, then sorrow will vanish, and death and despair flee away. And he shall reign ever, and nothing shall sever, from us the great love of our King. His peace and His pity shall bless His fair city. His praises we ever shall sing. Then haste we to show Him the praises we owe Him, our service he ne'er can despise whose love still is able to show us that stable where softly in manger he lies let's take a moment and pray together in the year gone by in the year to come and right at this moment you are with us god thank you for leading and loving teaching and caring for changing love at work in all of us in your love you hold all of creation in your hope you give new life in your peace you begin again so what had gone and what is yet to be, we declare. Alleluia. Thank you, holy God. Amen. And for something completely different today, we'll consider the stories of the Magi. And in our Christian tradition, there are multiple ways in which we consider the Magi. There's aspects of myth, there's aspects of um, speculation. Uh, we have given these people names. We don't know much about them, but they have become entrenched in our story. The idea that there were people who had ideas about this new Messiah and that they engaged in that story by trying to find out more and in that search, offering gifts. And so, for something completely different today, we'll hear their stories.
opens bright with mystery and science searches nature's art when all creation yearns for peace and hope sinks deep in human hearts appear to us a holy light lift from our eyes the shades of Hello, my name is Melchior. I brought the gold to offer to the child. I came from the land of Persia. I was not a king as a lot of those songs suggest. Uh, none of us were in fact. Uh, we sometimes advised kings. We sometimes those advised those who struggled against kings. Maybe you'd call me a priest. Maybe you'd call me an astrologer. I spent my days studying the world and the stars, looking for signs about what would happen. And for centuries, my ancestors have done just that. Uh, we believe that the sky gives us information about what's happening and what will happen both in our homeland and in places far away. It's one of the ways the creator of the world speaks to us. Anyways, back to the, the story at hand. Uh, one night, I was taking my regular readings of the sky when something highly unusual caught my eye. A new light in the sky. Well, quickly, I consulted my charts and I couldn't find anything explaining it. So I studied it closely and I watched how it interacted with the other stars in the sky. And it was soon obvious to me that something spectacular was about to happen. The star signified a royal birth. And everything about it suggested that it was to happen in the land of the Jews. And so I needed to learn more. As it happens, there's a tradition in my family that we have a connection to the people of Jerusalem. Many years ago, the Babylonians conquered that city and took captives. And one of those was a young man named Daniel. He rose high in the esteem of the Babylonian royal court. And when my Persian ancestors conquered the Babylonians, this same Daniel moved into the service of the Persian king. It's a tradition in my family that Daniel was one of us, that he was in the same group of advisors that we are. For all I know, I could be one of his descendants. And because of this, we had in our records many writings from Jewish lands, and I quickly consulted those to see what I could learn. At any rate, I quickly sent messages to my colleagues in other lands, telling them what I had seen and learned. Something this important required that we give a reply of some sort. We had to go and see for ourselves this thing that had happened. And while I was waiting for an answer from my friends, I began to prepare to travel. A, a king had been born. I, I needed to take a proper gift. And so I obtained a large casket of gold, a truly regal gift. When Herod barters power and lives and Rachel's weeping fills the night, when suffering's mask marks every face And love's a refugee in flight Reveal to us your word of grace And make us witness to your peace My name is Casper, a scholar from one of the kingdoms in that part of the world that you now consider part of Southeast Asia. I brought frankincense to offer the child. Uh, like my friend Melchior, I study the night skies for signs and warnings and news. And when I too saw the strange new light in the sky, I wondered what it would be. As I'm still young and inexperienced, I asked my mentors what they saw. But they had no idea what this new sign was. All they could tell me was that it was something of great importance. And asking every wise person in the kingdom, I knew that I only had one other choice. To the west in Persia was Melchior, far older than I and much more learned. So quickly I gathered 
those around me, a small armed escort, and I started on my way to consult with him. And I barely started out when a message from Melchior met me on the road. We made camp and we shared a meal together. And after the meal, I asked what the message was that had been brought. And after I heard it, I could not wait any longer. Early the next morning, we broke camp and I hastened to meet with Melchior to discuss the news. When I arrived at his palace, I found him preparing to leave. And after we'd feasted together, I asked him to show me one of the old Jewish writings that he had in his records. I spent an entire night and the whole next day poring over them, pausing only to compare my understandings with Melchior. And what I found amazed me. That next night, Melchior and I went up to the observation gallery and watched the night sky again. The light had changed slightly. I looked at Melchior and said, it is done. The, the child is born. Melchior said nothing, only nodded in agreement. And while we watched, I took some more measurements and consulted the notes I'd made. There's more here than the birth of a king, I said. My readings of these signs suggest that God has come to dwell here on earth. Well, at that very moment, we decided we had to leave the next day. So in the morning, we gathered our servants together and Melchior called on his apprentices to join us with a large escort that we set out with. As we traveled, we discussed what gifts would be most appropriate to take to this child. Knowing that many cultures burn incense in God's presence, I knew what I needed. And so in the next city, I sent my most trusted one out to buy a large quantity of frankincense. So to honor the child who was God in human form. When fragile faith like desert wind blows dry and empty hope be raised. When withered grass and fading flower proclaim again our days space breathe on the clay of our despair and work a new creation there my name is balthazar i come from arabia and brought myrrh to lay at the feet of the child when the first messenger from melchior arrived i was stunned how could I have missed such a sign? How could I have not heard about such things happening in the land of my siblings? For we are siblings, you know, we Arabs and, and Jews. In this desert peninsula, we count ourselves as the descendants of Ishmael, the firstborn of Abraham. But uh, alas, from time to time, we've been at odds with our siblings, but I digress. I spent many hours mulling over the message I'd received, wondering what it might mean. I searched the writings we had in our records. I stared at the night sky. I spent time in deep meditation. What should I do? And then a second messenger came. Melchior had been joined by Caspar from farther east. They were certain that the child was born. Even more, they were sure that it was more than a human king that had been born that God had come to earth. I resolved then and there to join them in their quest to see the child. So I gathered my own servants and a small escort and I went to meet them on the road. In addition to my scholarship, I've been blessed with the gift of interpreting dreams. And it was a dream that influenced my choice of gift. My heart carried deep foreboding that this child would someday be killed. And so I gathered together a large supply of myrrh, a burial spice. And after I joined my fellow travelers, we continued to the most logical place to go to look for the new king of the Jews. We went to Jerusalem. We were quite a large entourage by this time with many armed people as escorts. And the, king, the people around the king were clearly unsure of what to make of us. While we were there, our compatriots, those who also studied the ancient writings and the signs of the times, looked into their traditions and told us that we were close to our goal. Bethlehem was where we wanted to go. 
So it was that we took our leave of the Jewish king and journeyed out. After we paid our homage to the child and presented our gifts, we made ready to return to our homes. Melchior and Caspar had promised the Jewish king that we would tell him where the Jewish child was to be found. Foolish men. They'd obviously not heard about Herod. In Arabia, we'd heard about how jealous and violent and how murderous he was. Then I was warned in a dream. If we told Herod where the child was, the child would surely die. And once I told this to my fellow compatriots, the choice was obvious. We bypassed Jerusalem and went home by a different road. Strangely, many years later, I heard stories about a teacher who was thought to be God in human form. He was executed, but his followers claimed that he had been the same child that we had visited all those years ago. Of him, it was said that once people met him, they could not follow the same path any longer. They too had to follow a different road. And that is something completely different for today. When heaven's bright with mystery And stars will lead an unknown way When love still lights a gentle path Where courts of power can hold no sway There with the magi let us be Let's take a moment and pray together. God, the scriptures proclaim to us the message of your light. Loving and ever-present God, shine your light on us so that we may discover and live a path that follows you. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, another one of those prophets who was speaking during the time of Babylonian exile and a time of turmoil and uncertainty for the Hebrew people. Sing a song of joy for Jacob. Shout for this greatest of nations. Shout it out with praise in your hearts. O eternal, save your people, rescue the remnant of Israel. Watch now as I bring them from the land to the north as I gather my people from the ends of the earth. Look who is among those returning home, the disabled and the infirm, expectant mothers and even those giving birth, all of these together in the multitude on its way home. Listen as they come home weeping and repenting, praying for direction, pleading for mercy as I bring them back. In that day, I will lead them be quiet, beside quiet streams of water and take them upon a straight path where they will not stumble. Why? Because I am Israel's parent and they are my firstborn. Listen to the word of the eternal, you nations of the earth. Take this story to distant shores and make it known. The one who scattered Israel will now gather the people and watch over the flock as a shepherd. For the Eternal has rescued the people and redeemed them from those who are too strong for them. The redeemed will return home and shout for joy from the top of Mount Zion. They will shine with the sheer goodness of the Eternal. The harvests of grain, wine, and oil, the healthy flocks and herds, their lives will be like a lush, well-watered garden. From that day on, they will never no sorrow. The eternal one speaks. Young ones will dance for joy. Others will join them, old ones too. I will comfort my people and replace their sorrows with gladness. From the overflow of sacrifices, I will satisfy my priests. All my people will feast on my goodness. This is what the eternal declares.
and our next reading. The story from the book of John of Jesus eternal, present in the past, present in the future, present with us now. And I'm reading from the voice translation. Before time itself was measured, the voice was speaking. The voice was and is God. This celestial word remained ever present with the creator. This speech shaped the entire cosmos. Immersed in the practice of creating all things that exist were birthed in him. This breath filled all things with a living, breathing light, a light that thrives in the depths of darkness, blazes through murky bottoms. It cannot and will not be quenched. A man named John, who was sent by God, was the first to clearly articulate the source of this light. This baptizer put in plain words the elusive mystery of the divine light, so all might believe through him. Some wondered whether he might be the true light, but John was not the light. He merely pointed to the light. The true light who shines upon the heart of everyone was coming into the cosmos. The voice entered our world. Even though the voice came to and for the people, they refused to listen and recognize the voice. But for all who did receive and trust, they were reborn as children of God. This birthright was bestowed not by human power or initiative, but by God's will. The voice took on flesh and became human and chose to live alongside us. We've seen the voice enveloped in undeniable splendor, the one true begotten of God evidenced in the perfect balance of grace and truth. John the Baptist testified about the voice and shouted, this is the one I've been telling you is coming. This person is much greater than I am because they existed long before me. Through this person, we all receive gifts of grace beyond our imagination. You see, Moses gave us rules to live by. But Jesus, the anointed, offered us gifts of grace and truth. God, unseen until now, is revealed in the voice, God's only child, straight from the parent's heart. These are essential words for us to consider in our lives today. Thanks be to God. Let's take a moment and pray together. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts cause us to be stirred by your spirit to go into the world to share Jesus' message, a voice for all. The Gospel of John begins not with Jesus' birth or John's baptism, but with a deliberate echo of the creation story in Genesis. What in the world is happening? It takes us back before time began to the moment when God interrupts the silence and speaks the cosmos into existence. Only John's Gospel names Jesus as the Greek word, the Logos, and declares that Jesus existed long before time was measured. This Greek word carries a variety of meanings, all relating to the act of speaking. It could be translated word, 
a thought that comes to expression, a message, a, a declaration, a reason, or, or, or even the content of teaching and preaching. But most of these meanings uh, can be found in, in various translations. But it's clear that John means for this Logos to be declared to all creation. John's use of Logos is unique, and it's often been rendered as word. And while this is a useful translation, even a casual understanding demonstrates that word reflects only part of its meaning. Most of us think of that word and consider it to mean a unit of language, a, a combination of sounds that are spoken and written that carry meaning with them. To understand what John means, we as readers need something more than the cultural understanding of the day with respect to a word. The writer of the voice translation that was read this morning sought to do just that to offer a new way of thinking about the word and the culture within which it was written. And this rendering, it's interpretive, it's poetic, and for those words at the beginning of the book of John, they offer poetic language to some of the most theologically loaded words in all of scripture. Since logos essentially refers to the act of speaking or bringing thoughts to expression, they use the word voice to capture that reality. John is declaring that truth is culminating. It's culminated in the person of Jesus. No single word can capture the complete meaning of this logos. But voice does give us some advantages. First, voice manifests in the action of speaking. It's voice is uh, that which is spoken and that which is heard. So it comes on both sides of the communication event. It bridges the gap between the sender and the receiver. And John intends that in Jesus, God is speaking and revealing God's self to the world. Second, a voice is distinct and it's personal. We can distinguish when one person is talking compared to another simply by their voices. In John 10, we'll hear ultimately in a, in a few weeks that John describes the fact that sheep hear the voice of the shepherd when the shepherd calls and follow, but they refuse to follow a stranger because they do not know that person's voice. John desires that we know Jesus as God's child, the begotten of God, and believe in Jesus personally as our good shepherd. Uh, the third reason why I think this is a good use is the, the voice idea of voice is a dynamic piece. It reflects the activity of a living God. It's robust. It, it uh, has power that's attributed to it. It's historical in that any act of speaking comes to expression, and it, it takes place in time and space as a voice calling, and so there's a response that comes with that. It challenges any notion that Christianity or Christian faith can be reduced to rules or propositions or challenges it, or, or, or a doctrine that we just believe that's static, that's not lived out in our lives. Because in Jesus, God is speaking and revealing God's self to the world. And because in Jesus, we hear the voice of God, then this new reality changes everything. And so we too, must change with it. What in the world does all this mean? That's for us to consider together. That's for us to grapple with as part of a community that seeks language that reflects inclusion, invitation, willingness to embrace difference and uniqueness so that all may be a part. 
knowing that Jesus, as the light, does not call out from a distant place, but draws near by coming to us in the world, is important. A voice that we listen for in each other and in the world around us. Perhaps words that offer epiphany for the coming year. Amen. About a year ago when this whole pandemic began, Jim Strafty, who is a very prolific uh, composer of church music as well as a wonderful singer and musician in his own right, he and his wife Jean decided to release to the public a bunch of sing-along videos of the two of them performing some of Jim's greatest songs. So this morning, rather than singing along with me at the piano singing one of Jim's songs, I thought perhaps we'd all enjoy singing along with the man who wrote the song himself, Jim and Jean Strathdee performing I Am the Light of the World. I am As we offer our gifts in this time of coming light, we share our love with the world. God, transform us in our giving 
to be agents of love and light to a world that needs both. Amen. Let's take time to pray for our world together. God, we are called to be people of light in our connections with family and friends, both near and far. Your love, O oh God, is here. In our remembering of those who must venture into the world to work and care for us and our needs in these challenging times, your love, O oh God, is here. We sometimes find ourselves seeking favor with the wealthy and the powerful. As we are in touch with those who are sick, sorrowing, and troubled, in our own community and in the world, your love, O oh God, is here. And so often our faith does not translate into action. As we reach out to meet needs for food, shelter, and companionship, and as we work for justice and empowerment of the oppressed, your love, O oh God, is here. We give thanks for your love, Love that we know in Jesus who inspired us to find new ways to be with and for each other. And so we share the words that Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As with gladness those of old did the guiding star behold as with joy they hailed its light leading onward beaming bright so most gracious god may we evermore your splendor see as with joyful steps they sped to that lonely manger bed, there to bend the knee before Christ, whom heaven and earth adore. So may we with eager pace ever seek your throne of grace. Holy Jesus, every us in the narrow way, and when earthly things are past, bring our ransomed souls at last. Where they need no star to guide, where no clouds your glory hide. In the heavenly country bright, none shall need created light you its light its joy its crown you its sun which goes not down therefore ever may we sing hallelujah to our king as you go from this place Receive God's grace and be open to new vision, the new light that it offers. And may the love of God and the power of the Spirit and the presence of Jesus be with you today and always. Amen.